Apart from agricultural activities, research and communication for sustainable development, the African Center for Community and Development is also involved in agroforestry, forestry and ecotourism activities under her Green Cradle project aimed at conserving biodiversity improving capacities in agroforestry, analog forestry and conservation agriculture, as well as improving ecotourism and research on tropical biodiversity and food production in Cameroon and Sub-Saharan Africa. Good day, sir. Good day. Uh, thank you very much for talking to people, places and events. You are now consulting at the Green Cradle Project uh, with the African Center for Community and Development. What is your impression about the biodiversity here, which is going to be maintained, and the, the greater project? It is uh, very wonderful, considering that uh, we have uh, in this real de Ray Basin uh, virtually a replica of the forest as it was before human intervention. So the fact that we're going to try to maintain a part of this um, uh, forest in its natural state will serve as um, uh, one of those uh, catalysts to ensure that people also understand that we need to preserve this. In terms of what is found here, it's a very, very uh, wide-ranging thing from uh, small fibrous plants to major trees here, both fruit trees and berries consumed by human beings and others which are basically natural um, uh, in, from a natural habitat for, for monkeys of various sorts, such as genions, potinous genions, which are here. And uh, down there, we also have, in terms of um, uh, ruminants and rodents, there are a whole wide um, range of them here. And of course, uh, the pollinating aspect of uh, bees and various other insects which you find here, it is there is an absolutely unimaginable range. This is a snail that has got an antenna at its back as well as its normal antenna in front. You can see here, this is one. It's using it to navigate. And these are other ones in front. This is found in the green cradle. These are some of the attractions that nature lovers can discover. This snail is a rare species to science and not very common. There might be a discovery here. And this snail, when touched, it gets into its shell and it's now trying to come out again. Slightly different from other snails, as you can see. Then of course, it balances itself to move on. This is where an insect has laid its, its eggs, as you can see. And soon, these new life mongers will be taking their first air on the planet Earth. You can see a strange caterpillar on the cloth of one of the workers at the Green Cradle. These are the kind of attractions that can make you stay at the Echo Heaven forever. <laughs> but I must tell you, we don't know whether it's poisonous or not. <laughs> and this is Stanchot that grows in the wild. And 
we are trying to maintain it here at the project the green cradle project it is a very wonderful spice that is used in the preparation of soup for fish and all that we are domesticating some presently at the african center of community and development to replenish that which is growing in the wild as well and what do we do with tanchot uh, ce qu'on appelle tanchot, qui est la, la nourriture principale de l'homme de la manne dans la soupe. Vraiment, c'est très heureux parce que je suis en train de les voir, qu'on est en train de les, de les maintenir, pour que les Camerounais et, la, et toute l'Afrique qui ne manquent pas ce qu'on appelle tanchot, parce que c'est très difficile de le consommer. Now, uh, we have a lot of bread life here, and I think from what you just said, do you encourage that this place is taken as a serious hub for ecotourism? It is. It, it, it should be. It's, it, it goes without saying. Again, the natural formation of this, actually, this patch of forest lies on a base of um, um, uh, volcanic rock, and I cut off a basalt, a huge basalt sap cuts off having a drop of 25 meters to 30 meters on one side, which forms a riverbed. Going through. So you now have a great, um, uh, um, uh, a great movement from um, the water base right up to um, uh, the, the lower reaches of the Mount Cameroon uh, mountain because this is where we find ourselves. Within the, 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 the reserve, as I may call it, there are other streams that flow through again. So it really gives that wide variance and um, uh, you can, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful in terms of, again, uh, being straight smack in the middle of um, uh, about the rainiest region we can have um, uh, in this area and probably in, in Africa actually, about second or third in the world. And you can have that, that, that wide flow of, of, uh, of, um, of diversity between, as I say, um, uh, water-based animals and plants and then also um, uh, typical, typical forest plants in this region. <coughs> So we are in the big farm of the African Center for Community and Development. Strategizing on pig feed is very important. That is why it is advisable that social capital mobilization should be an invaluable aspect in the design of pig farming. Pig farmers must design innovative ways of feeding pigs in order to reduce their cost. One such way we've identified at the African Center for Community and Development is to feed pigs with perishable fruits or fruits that cannot be sold in the market, like before. This entails that we create synergies between social sellers or to create limits between the and our in order that we can benefit from the fruits that they normally throw away because of the fact that they have so we are in the big farm of the African Center for Community and Development strategizing on big Feed is very important. That is why it is advisable that social capital mobilization should be an invaluable aspect in the design of big farming. Big farmers must design innovative ways of feeding pigs in order to reduce their cost. One such way we've identified at the African Center for Community and Development is to feed pigs with perishable fruits or fruits that cannot be sold in the market, like before. This entails that we create synergies between social sellers or to create limits between social sellers in order that we can benefit from the fruits that they normally throw away because of the fact that they have both very poor most harvest technologies. In this case, we have been able to identify some fresh food dealers that we require fruits for in order that we can supplement the diet of pigs at the African Center of Community and Development. Well...
strategic farming to be successful, it has to be based on cost-saving advantages to the pig farmer. And it is our opinion that much more knowledge systems on this should be organized in developing countries in order to empower communities with the pig farming. As you know, it is sweet and juicy, and that means it's about to get what is even more juicy. And we will probably have some fruit flies on it that can probably increase the calcium content of your feet in the long run as well. deal in fresh fruits and they are very happy to help in uh, our industry here at the African Center for Community and Development. Why do you think that um, big farmers should acquire um, fruits that are about to get back from these women? Well, thank you. You know, as a uh, big farming is concerned, we, we have to standardize the means of feeding in order to see how we can reduce the cost of feeding since the feed that we buy that has been made by maize and such are expensive. We need to look alternative means in order to feed our pigs. So we contact the food sellers that are selling alongside the road so that they can help us with the waste food that are Rotten food that are not that they don't use again, not only for poor, but food like banana, pineapple, watermelon, um, pear. The only food that the um, pig does not eat is orange and things like grapes. So, at times, they are also very happy to help us to see how we can increase on our pig farming. That is very important, as in a way, taking their wasted fruits or their fruit that are about to get rotten is a way of waste punishment because many of these women simply dump their rotten fruits along the road, hence increasing the cost of the local council in terms of cleaning. So in a way, we are trying to reduce dirtiness in the cities and to explore better means of empowering communities through pig farming and the management of waste from perishable foods. And this is a project at the African Center for Community and Development in which we have to be involved with non-timber forest products as we believe they are very valuable to our domestic and possibly international markets here. In this case, we are trying to to nurse the bush mango, which is eaten in most parts of Cameroon and West Africa. It is used in the preparation of ogbono soup and several other dishes in this part of the world. Our intention is to be able to meet up with the growing need for this food-based non-timber forest product, especially as the forest in Cameroon and much of the Congo Basin is facing a lot of depletion and degradation due to human activity. We have taken these seeds from where they naturally grow from the Manu division of Cameroon and we shall be 
carried out a project around the Mount Cameroon forest area where it can also grow and where it is also nearer ports as well as urban centers like Douala, Yaoundé and possibly a very populated area like Nigeria just across the sea. This particular species have been selected as their fruit and twice in a year and they produce substance that is really very good for the soup. That's a pull at your own shape. You want to the dry season. Okay. Now which kind of um, uh, bush mango is? The bush mango is bush mango we with the receiver only for dry season. We from America and say on one day I say a partir de janvier, février, mars. Okay, he's saying that this particular bush mango is the dry season bush mango. He's going to show us the rainy season bush mango as well. Ça c'est pour la saison pluvieuse. On a au mois de mai, juin et juillet. This is for the rainy season, where it is harvested from May right up to July. It can in September. It can even get as well as to September as well. Areas that this fruit of generally grows are cut off from the city centers due to bad roads and it is hoped that such projects can well be replicated in order to meet up with the growing demand, which is a vital aspect of the economic expansion which is split in Africa, especially now that Africa is the fastest growing continent on the record. We needed to keep the plants moist to travel for as long as we did from our new right up to this part of the country. And we have to plant now in order that they maintain their freshness and they can easily adapt to the new soils that we have arranged for them here. Our soils are rich, pregnant with pig dung and fowl dung, which is a good base for a successful nursery. Hence, we are sure that we will be able to transfer healthy plants into the project area that we have allocated for this intervention. And this is what is called tanchot in Bayang dialect. It is a very wonderful spice. It is the leaf of the bush pepper and the fruits are eaten as well as the leaf. Was it difficult to find this one? Uh, it's very difficult to find this one. Il se trouve que dans la forêt, il ne se trouve pas aux alentours de la maison. Donc il faut marcher dans la forêt pour le cueillir. Et ce tantiot qu'on appelle en langue, en dialecte de, de, de Opa Banyang et de Banyangé, c'est le poivre. Mais ça, ce il y a le poivre français et le poivre de la traditionnel. traditionnelle. Donc ça, c'est traditionnel, qui est très bon dans la sauce. So you see that we are trying to bring um, non timber forest products at the doorsteps of people where it is difficult to get them because they are located in the forest we are trying to bring them near the city centers so now we will be planting the time short spice and we have decided to use manure that we've been keeping at the African Center for Community and Development from pig and good dung, as you can see. It's ample manure here, and therefore the plant is going to do very well here. It's also a non-timber forest product, which is a wonderful spice. It's eaten in one of the local delicacies with fufu, with plantains, and 
bringing the forest into the city centers is a mission that must be replicated in many African cities and also taking the cities into the rural areas as a necessary dose as well. Once the plant starts creeping, it will find itself an opportunity to climb or to creep. All is, it's, it's both a climber and it's also a creeper. On fait quoi avec le tancho? Tancho, c'est en général comme à la langue de l'homme de la main qui l'appelle tancho. C'est l'un des condiments de la soupe qui donne un bon goût dans la soupe. Et que bon, la plupart confond ce que l'homme de la main appelle tancho et, le, et les feuilles de, de poivre. Mais on dit aussi que c'est un médicament. C'est un, un médicament contre la tension. La, la, la fièvre jaune, donc on appelle la jaunisse. This is also traditional logic. It is said it is used in the treatment of hypertension as well as jaundice. So we are hoping that we are going to domesticate plants here and we are still going to introduce Gnetum Africanum into the wild in order that we can replenish um, those that have been extinct to bring forth some animals here to produce biogas and other issues. And we hope that this project is going to be replicated in Central Africa, East Africa, and other parts of the developing world. Thanks for watching people, places, and events.